guys, it's Tina and I am back and I am here with another swatch video for you guys. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see future videos like this if you want to see swatches and previews of reviews, upcoming reviews, then definitely hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my videos. But like I mentioned in my 2016 update video, I am going to be showcasing swatches of products before I do the full review because I think that swatches can be very helpful and sometimes some of us just want to see the swatches. So today's video is showcasing the Anastasia Beverly Hills single eyeshadows. Now there are quite a few palettes from Anastasia Beverly Hills online, you know, in store, you can check them out, but these are the single eyeshadows which are available online at AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com. In the springtime, they're coming to Ulta stores and Sephora stores, so you'll be able to get these eyeshadows, the full lineup, on those websites as well. But for now, they're available on the Macy's website as well as AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com, and you can also find them in stores if you go to select Macy's that has the impulse section. So Macy's that has the impulse section will have these eyeshadows so you can go and swatch them yourselves. And as I mentioned, these are single eyeshadows so you would buy each individual eyeshadow pan just like this. You get it in a little pan and these are $12 each and you would need to put them in your own palette. But you can also go ahead and buy these in bundles and they have two different deals for you. If you buy four eyeshadow singles, you get them for $40, so that's $10 each. You're saving $2 each on the eyeshadows. Plus you get a empty four eyeshadow palette. So an empty palette to put your eyeshadows in and you don't have to invest in a separate like Z palette to put them in. Or you can go ahead and buy eight of the eyeshadows in a bundle for $70 and that makes them $8.75 each. So you're saving quite a lot by buying them in a bundle of eight versus buying them in singles or even in a four pan. And then you do get the eight eyeshadow palette as well to um, put the eyeshadows in. So you're saving money plus you're getting a free palette. So I say if you're gonna get these, get them in the bundles, preferably the eight pan bundles. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into the swatches so you can see these. I also went ahead and grabbed some of the new shades from their lineup that they recently debuted. And I'm gonna swatch those two. Those are more towards the end since I just got them. So you can see the colors, see what I kinda think about them. And yeah, see if there's something that you want to pick up yourself. First up we have Ice Blue, which is a cool light blue. And this is a satin finish. As you can see, it's very pale. It's very sheer. It doesn't have too much pigmentation. Then we have Aqua, which is again a light shimmery aqua color. This also is very sheer in pigmentation. And it does have some silver flecks. Then we have Fresh Green, which is a shimmer, and it's a minty green with sparkle. As you can see, it's kind of a grass green with silver sparkle. Again, a sheer color. Here is the shade Vibrant Pink, which is a satin. This one is a medium tone rosy pink with some silver sparkle throughout. Again, sheer pigmentation. Then we have Electro which is a duochrome shimmery light purple shade with some blue and pink duotone. This one has a little bit better pigmentation and it doesn't have those sparkles. Then we have the shade Iridescent Purple, which is a duochrome. It's a purple with blue iridescence. And this one is a deeper toned blue tone purple with blue shimmer. Again, it has that duochrome but the duochrome is not as strong because it does already have blue undertone. Then we have Opaline, which is also another duochrome. And this one is a bright violet with magenta iridescence. As you can see, this is a deeper toned purple shade with a bit of pink iridescence to it. Then we have the shade Violet, which is one of the ultra mattes. And this is just a matte violet purple. As you can see, it has decent pigmentation and it does go on evenly. So here are those eight shades swatched. Here we have the shade Teal Shimmer, which is a peacock blue. As you can see, it's a sheer pigmentation 
and it does have a bit of a sheen to it. Then we have Dragonfly, which is a duochrome and it's an iridescent blue with purple. Again, it takes a little bit of build up because it has sheer pigmentation and I don't really see the purple sheen. You see purple in this? Mm -hmm. I don't see nothing. I see the purple. Then we have Star Blue, which is a vibrant navy and this is a satin. It takes some build up so I don't know about that vibrant navy but it's a navy color and this one I see purple in rather than the other one here, the dragonfly. Then we have the shade mermaid which is a deep teal green shade. I don't know if I would classify this as mermaid but it's a deep greenish teal shade with some sheen to it. Again, it takes some building up to get the color. Here is Emerald, which is one of the metallic shades. And this is a rich emerald green. And this one has great pigmentation with one swipe. This is just one swipe. It's a deep emerald green with a little bit of shimmer to it. Then here we have China Rose, which is a duochrome. And this one is a rosy peach. And this one also has great pigmentation with one swipe. It's kind of a golden peach shade with some pink throughout it. Very pretty color. It reminds me of Cosmopolitan from Makeup Geek, but it's a little bit more subtle shimmer. Here we have Rosette, which is a deep purpley cranberry shade with some shimmer. It's a very pretty shade, has good pigmentation in one swipe. I actually really like this shade as a cranberry shade. It applies very well to the lids. Here we have Denim Smoky, which is another metallic shade. And this one is described as a deep blue gray. And I somewhat agree. It's a nice blue tone charcoal color. It's a beautiful shade as well. Great pigmentation in one swipe. And here you have those eight shades swatched. Here we have Vanilla, which is a velvet and it's described as a buttery white. This one is kind of a ivory shade with some sheen to it. Not that much pigmentation on my skin, but if you use it as a highlight, it shouldn't be much of an issue. This one is 10K, which is described as a wheat gold and it's a satin. And it has great pigmentation and I really like this color, especially for an inner tear duct highlight. It's a great subtle gold shade. This shade is metal and it's one of the titanium shades. It's described as a silver gold. And it's an icy light gold shade. It has great pigmentation considering it's just meant to be a glitter shade. Here we have Truffle Glitter, which is a deep bronzy gold shade. This is also one of the titanium shades. And again, it has great pigmentation for a glitter shade. I really like these shades as like an accent on the center of a smoky eye. They're really pretty and they give you like a nice shimmery effect. This shade here is Stone, which is an ultra matte and it's described as a light ash gray. And that is exactly what it is. It's a light ash gray. It's a matte finish, has good pigmentation. Then this shade is Victorian, which is one of the metallic shades and it's described as an antique silver. And it does come off as a taupey kind of burnt silver shade. Here is the shade Topaz, which is a satin and it's described as a bronze gold. And that is exactly what it is. It's a golden bronze shade. It's very pretty. Good pigmentation. Then this shade is Chai, which is a satin and described as a bronzed brown. And I think the shade description on the website are actually very true to color. As you can see, it's a bronzy brown shade with some sheen to it. Very pretty color again, great pigmentation. 
And again, here are those eight shades swatched. And I must say, I like all the colors, except maybe vanilla. It's a little bit too sheer for me, but as a highlight, it actually works out fine. So I guess I do like it as well. Aren't the titanium shades really pretty? Oh my God, they're so pretty. Now I'm going to go ahead and swatch more of the peachy tones or burnt orange tones. The first up is Orange Soda, which is an ultra matte that is described as a pastel peach. It barely shows up on my skin tone as you can see. Let me try to build it up some more. Yeah, it's not going to really show up because it kind of blends in with my skin tone. Which actually makes it a great color for a transition shade for me. So this is going to come in handy for me. You can't even see it, right? <laughs> then we have Burnt Orange Matte, which is another ultra matte. And this one is described as an orangey brown. And it is exactly that, an orangey brown, which I love oranges, especially when you have warmer skin tone. It's great to use in the crease area. And this one is a great matte orangey brown. Very beautiful transition shade. Here we have Fawn which is another ultra matte and this one is described as a soft brown and it looks a little bit similar to the one in the contour kit but it's not the exact shade but it's a nice contour shade actually for your eyes and it would work well on your skin as well it's kind of a soft brown with some gray undertone Next up is Caramel, which is described as a warm medium brown. And this one is another ultra matte. And this one is a little bit more brown than the burnt orange matte, as you can see. But they have similar on orange undertones. They're very pretty colors for neutral looks and building up dimension on the eye. Again, this one has great pigmentation. Next up we have Morocco, which is another ultra matte, and it's described as a brick shade. And it's kind of a red-orange-brown shade. Very pretty. Would work great again for warm looks. Great pigmentation yet again. And then it's only right to swatch Sienna next to it, which is another ultra matte. I think all of these are ultra mattes, and this one is described as a red-brown. And they're very similar colors, except Sienna is a little bit more rich, a little bit deeper than the Morocco shade. So you can see the two of them swatched there. Again, all of these shades have great pigmentation, except for the first one, which is the orange soda, which would probably work best as a transition shade for me because it really doesn't show up, which is actually a good thing. It blends into my skin very well. But these are kind of the peachy burnt orange shades. And they actually all have great pigmentation for ultra mattes. They work out very well on the skin. They apply really well without being powdery or patchy. Moving on to the other neutrals. This one is Warm Taupe, which is an ultra matte and it's described as a taupe brown. This one again has great pigmentation and these are great eyeshadows for neutral looks. They're even great for doing contours on your face because they have a touch of gray to them. So that one is a taupey brown with a bit of gray tinge to it. This shade is Custom, which is a satin shade and it's described as a lilac taupe gray and next to warm taupe you can see it has a little bit of a silver sheen to it as it reflects the color but it's a nice taupey shade again a good neutral shade it's a little bit more sheer in pigmentation but you can build it up for greater intensity this shade is brownie which is a metallic shade and it's described as a golden brown and I'm telling you, these color descriptions are just spot on. It is exactly a golden brown shade. Then we have Ash Brown, which is an ultra matte, and it's described as an ashy brown. So as you can see, it's a matte brown shade with gray undertone to it. Again, great shades for creating contour and dimension in the eye area as well as on the face because it has that gray undertone. It's a little bit too deep for me to use on my face, but if you're a deeper skin tone, this might make a great contour shade. But it's a nice matte brown with a gray undertone. 
this is Rich Brown, which is another ultra matte, and it's described as a dark ash brown. And as you can see, it's a rich, deep brown shade with a little touch of a grayish cast to it. And next to the other ashy brown shade, you can see the similar undertones, even though this one is much deeper. It's much more of an espresso brown, but it's not quite chocolatey. It has a little bit more of a gray undertone to it. I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell just looking at the swatches. Then keeping with the dark browns, I'm going in with deep brown, which is another ultra matte. And this one is described as a deep chocolate brown. And this one is definitely nicely pigmented. It's rich, deep shade, and you don't need much to get the full color payoff. This one is almost a blackened brown shade. Now we have Smoke, which is also an ultra matte, and this one is described as a charcoal brown. Now, I don't think it's so much of a charcoal brown as much as kind of an espresso brown. It has a tint, just a slight tint of red to it. Again, great pigmentation on these matte shades. I'm very impressed. They apply really well, very smoothly. They're not patchy or anything. Really beautiful neutral shades. And then last up, I'll swatch the black shade. This is Noir, and this again is an ultra matte, and it's described as a deep carbon black. And it is one swipe, oops, one swipe and I'm getting that rich pigmentation. I got a little carried away there, but as you can see, it's such a richly pigmented black. It's not the deepest, darkest black, but it's richly pigmented. And let's see if I build that up, what I'll get. Yeah, it builds up really nicely. You get deeper pigmentation as you build it up. I think that one is a beautiful dark black shade. Okay, so I cleaned that swatch up a bit and here are all eight shades again swatched. And I would say all of these shades have great pigmentation, except maybe Custom that applies a little bit sheer. It's not richly pigmented, but it's still a very nice shade. It applied evenly, so I love how all of these shades applied. They applied very well. They're very even in one swipe. And the deep shades are amazing. Like one swipe gets me the rich pigmentation that you see on my arm. And that's a very big swatch, as you can see, because you probably will never use these shades that much across your eyelid, but that shows you how far the actual swatch goes. So one pass of your brush is going to go that far in pigmentation. So these, again, are very beautifully pigmented shades. Now we're into the final set of swatches, and first up is Dark Chocolate Shimmer, which is a sparkle shade. It's a dark brown with shimmer and... This one is so pretty. It's a rich chocolate shade with bronzy sparkling glitter to it. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Can you see that? It's a very beautiful shade and as you can see it applies beautifully and I think if you use a good primer the glitter will stick to your skin as well because I did swatch these over primer. And now I'm swatching more of the warm tone shades with a little bit of red undertone. And the first up is Truffle, which is a shimmer shade. And it's described as a warm medium brown. And this one, I would say, is more of a reddened brown. I guess that's where the warmth comes from. And it has some shimmer to it. Very pretty color. Applies really well with nice pigmentation. Then we have Red Earth, which is an ultra matte, and it's described as a deep red brown. And it, to me, it's more of a medium toned pinky brown shade, as you can see. Very pigmented, that was one swipe, and it applied richly, really great, no patchiness. It's actually a really pretty color. Next to that, I'm swatching Hot Chocolate, which is also an ultra matte. And this one is a warm dark brown. So as you can see, it's darker than the Red Earth, but it still has that kind of reddish pink undertone to it. Beautiful color, beautiful pigmentation again. Next up is Deep Plum, which is an ultra matte, and this one is described as a deep maroon shade. And this one is kind of a purpley brown shade. It has a lot of deep purple to it, like almost like a cranberry purple. Very beautiful shade. It's more like a deep aubergine color. Very pretty, rich pigmentation again. 
And then last up is Beauty Mark, which is an ultra matte and it's described as an eggplant shade. This one is very similar to the one that we have next to it, which is Deep Plum. They're very similar shades. As you can see, Beauty Mark is a touch lighter with a little bit more burgundy to it, but they're very similar shades. I really don't think you would need both of those unless you're truly into those cranberry deep burgundy shades. And here are the final six shades again. And they are so pigmented, rich color payoff. One swipe and they go on that pigmented. It's amazing how they apply. I love these shades yet again. And this dark chocolate shimmer has me like, yeah, you need to be in a smoky look real quick. And again, these two shades are so similar that you probably don't need both. It just depends on what you're going for. This one's a little bit lighter, this one's a little bit richer, and this is, has a little bit more of that purple eggplanty undertone to it. I also picked up some more shades. This shade is nude, it's an ultra matte, and it's just a nude beige shade. It blends in pretty much with my skin, so it's a nice blending shade. Then we have Surface of the Sun, which I believe is a metallic shade, and it's just a really shimmery yellow gold shade, beautiful shade. Next we have Icy, which is a titanium finish, and it's described as a light blue with silver shimmer. And this one takes some building up, and using a dense brush will definitely help, but it's a very icy light blue shade. We have Star Cobalt, which is also a titanium finish, and it's a deep navy blue shade with purple iridescence. It's really gorgeous and layers up beautifully. Then we have Sangria, which is a satin finish, and this one is a muted cranberry shade with subtle sheen to it. Then we have Rich Velvet, which is a sparkle shade, and it's a matte, deep, red and brown shade with a silver sparkle, great pigmentation. We have another sparkle shade, this is Night Sky, and it's described as a black with silver sparkle, and it's just a matte black base with silver sparkle, but the sparkle doesn't really show up much, so you can use it as a matte black. Now we have Midnight, which is a titanium shade, and this one is a black with light blue sparkle. And the shimmer in this really shows up intensely. Does take some building up, but it has intense shimmer and glitter. Next we have Black Diamond, another titanium shade, and this is a matte black with gold sparkle. As you can see, again, a shade rich in glitter and pigmentation. So here are the shades again swatched on my arm. The best pigmentation comes from the titanium shades. They really build up nicely. And then the satin shades take a little building up, but they're workable. Now we're going to move on to the newest shades in the lineup, which don't have finishes, so I'm just going to go with what I see. This is Chiffon, which is a metallic olive brown shade with great pigmentation. This one is Brownie, which I think is a titanium, and it's a deep bronzy golden brown shade. It has great pigmentation. You do have to build it up a little bit, but it's a beautiful shade. Now we have Chocolate Crumble, which is another titanium shade, and this is kind of a purpley taupe. It looks very brown and silver, but it has a purple shift as well. Then we have Plum Smoke, which is a satin, and this one is a plummy, smoky, taupe brown shade. And then we have the shade Macaroon, which is a titanium, and it's a silvery, icy, rose pink shade. Then we have Aubergine, which is a satin, deep cranberry shade. I don't love this one. There are better cranberry shades in the lineup, like deep cranberry purples. And then we have Not Today, which is a dirty purple shade with silver sparkle. I think this is a sparkle finish, and it's just a dusty, dirty purple. Then we have Intense Gaze, which looks like a metallic, and it's a peachy coral shade with golden sheen. Here we have Henna, which is a titanium for sure, and it's a coppery red orange shade. It's just really metallic and beautiful. Then we have Fudge, which is a ultra matte, and this one is just a matte kind of orangey toned brown shade. It's really gorgeous and really pigmented. Then we have Emerald, which looks like a metallic or a satin shade, and this one is just a dirty, dusty forest green. It's a really muted green shade, so if you're looking for a tame green, here's one. And then we have Peacock, which is a deep, dirty um, olive green shade. It has a little bit of purple shift to it. It's like a duochrome. It's really interesting. 
And then we have, last up, Prussian Blue, which is another titanium shade for sure. And this is just a deep navy blue with a lot of shimmer and sparkle, and it's really pigmented. So here are the shades. Some of these shades, like, um, I'm not sure about, like... Some of them took some building up, but for the majority of the shades, they're really gorgeous. They have mostly great pigmentation. Some of them do take some building up, but the titanium shades blow me away. And that fudge shade, oh my God. The satin and the metallics, I could probably do without, but the other shades are really gorgeous. And that wraps up all the swatches. All right, guys, so hopefully those swatches were helpful. I will get into a full review at a later date, but overall, I really do love these eyeshadows. I particularly love the Ultra Matte Formula and the Titanium Formula. I think those two formulas are the best and I absolutely love them like they're up there with my favorite eyeshadows from makeup forever so I don't particularly like some of the lighter shades and the satin formula but the ultra matte formula is a definite recommendation from me and the diamond well titanium shades so if you're interested in checking those out let me know and let me know what shades you have picked up yourself and until my next video which will be very soon I'll talk to you bye